Vitamin C is a powerful antioxidant and immune boosting vitamin that is essential for our body's function. So why has controversy surrounded using it in high doses and for cancer treatment? In this video, we'll demystify this difficult to understand substance and help you decide if high dose vitamin C is a viable option for you or your patients. I'm Jason Seitz, paramedic, RN, and director of education. Welcome to Guardian MD. If you find this video to be informative, you can help us to keep this education free and accessible by sharing, liking, and subscribing. And don't forget to check out our other educational content. Ascorbic acid, also known as vitamin C, is a popular supplement that is often misunderstood. To begin to understand its function and use, we'll need to first define what a vitamin is. Vitamins are organic compounds that our body needs for normal growth and nutrition, but can't produce on its own. Vitamins play essential chemical roles in our body to help our body perform its functions. Most vitamins are obtained from the foods we eat, and large amounts aren't needed. Some vitamins are fat soluble and therefore can be stored in the body, and some are water soluble and require regular intake of small amounts to maintain healthy levels. Vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin, so it requires regular intake. Our bodies use it to create collagen, L-carnitine, several neurotransmitters, and also to metabolize protein. It plays a significant role in our wound healing, immune system, and our absorption of iron. In fact, lack of vitamin C can cause an iron deficient disease process known as scurvy, which was experienced often on ships in the 16th to 18th century. This affected millions of sailors due to their lack of access to vitamin C rich fruits and vegetables. Another benefit of vitamin C is its antioxidative effects. Antioxidants are substances that remove free radicals from the body. Free radicals are unstable molecules that are the byproduct of normal cell metabolism. They happen in everyone, but at high levels can cause harm to nearby DNA, lipids, and proteins, which is believed to increase risk of disease, including cancer, and interrupt cell function. These harmful free radicals are oxidants, meaning they react with oxygen, and vitamin C, like other antioxidants, helps clean the body of these free radicals by donating electrons to them, changing their molecular composition, which breaks a chain reaction that could cause harm. Because free radicals can cause damage that can increase your chances of developing disease and cancers, and vitamin C removes those free radicals, it is understood that vitamin C helps keep your body free of disease. Now, this mechanic is different from fighting active disease or killing present cancer cells. And all of the benefits we've talked about so far have been proven by hard science and can be achieved by maintaining a low dose nutritional balance of vitamin C. Where things can become more controversial and hard to understand is when vitamin C is used in high doses for cancer fighting effects. While this may seem like a new concept, it's actually been around for quite some time. Around 1970, Nobel Prize winner Linus Pauling, a chemist, theorized that vitamin C, when taken in high doses, could potentially kill cancer cells. Many studies have followed this, but some in the scientific community have argued that the results are inconclusive or the studies are too varied and small. We at Guardian are educators, not researchers or scientists, and want to be clear that there's a lot of opinions on this matter and encourage you to do your own research for yourself and your patients. While we understand the skepticism of some, we also have seen and heard examples of vitamin C benefiting others greatly when nothing else could. In medicine, new science uncovers new truths daily, so we look forward to a day when the confusion on this matter is settled definitively once and for all. In the meantime, we'll explain the concept as to why high-dose vitamin C is considered by some to be an effective cancer-fighting tool. When vitamin C reaches high levels in the body, it's believed that in addition to its antioxidative effects, it enters a pro-oxidative process called redox cycling. A pro-oxidant works quite differently than an antioxidant. In fact, it does the opposite of what antioxidants do. Pro-oxidants create free radicals in the body. So how can vitamin C do both? In our case, redox cycling is believed to occur when vitamin C reduces free radicals like ferrous sulfate into ferric iron. That's just vitamin C doing its regular antioxidant job. But that iron could still oxidize and turn into a different free radical called hydroxyl if it's able to react with peroxide. Essentially, vitamin C is still reducing a free radical, but the byproduct of this reaction, in the right conditions, can convert into a different one. 
This free radical, like other free radicals, is harmful to the body's cells. Healthy cells, however, can protect themselves with an enzyme called catalase that can break it down into a relatively harmless form. Since cancer cells have very low catalase, creating this particular free radical can potentially damage or destroy cancer cells while remaining relatively harmless to our normal cells. This is a complicated process to understand, but simply put, high-dose vitamin C has the potential to create free radicals that harm cancer cells and do minimal damage to healthy cells. More research is being conducted every day to definitively prove that this process is safe and effective. Using high-dose vitamin C is not without its risks. The most common side effects of vitamin C are digestive stress, like upset stomach, diarrhea, and nausea. Iron overload is also a risk with high doses, which could lead to organ damage if not monitored properly. If your clinic is interested in using high-dose vitamin C for oncological effects, you'll need to have a few things in place first. First and foremost, ensure that you have a medical director overseeing your clinic and approving your protocols. Non-physician providers are required to have physician oversight in the form of a medical director or physician collaborator to ensure that the practices are legal and safe. You'll also want your cancer patients to have consulted with their oncologist regarding receiving treatment. Every patient and patient care plan is different, and the patient's oncologist will have the most in-depth and up-to-date information on whether or not vitamin C is a safe choice for them. Regular labs and testing may be required for cancer patients undergoing therapy, so communication is key. Some contraindications of vitamin C therapy include G6PD deficiency, kidney disease, hemochromatosis, or if your patient is pregnant or breastfeeding. As always, ensure you have the proper training and knowledge base, discuss your treatment plans with your patients, walk them through the process, record consent, and deliver safe and appropriate care according to your state guidelines. If you need help navigating this process, that's why Guardian MD exists. We can connect you to a medical director or physician collaborator, provide example SOPs, and refer you to legal sources to ensure your practice is operating within compliance. Check out what we're doing at guardianmd.com and help us in our mission to ensure every provider can have a practice. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow. We'll see you next time.